animators and welcome back to my game animation workshop. This is going to be a short episode piggybacking off the previous look at episode. And if you remember in that episode, I mentioned talking about a different way to do these look at animations using additive animations instead of full body animations. In the previous version of the look at's that we made, we used these full body animations that we authored in Maya. We brought those into Unreal, put those in a blend space, and made the character look around using these full body assets. Now that's great, it looks really good. It allowed us to author those, uh, those poses to look exactly like we wanted them, and it really like looked good. But one of the problems of authoring full body assets like that is that if you want to extend those look at's across any of your other states, like for example, the stop animations, you have to author those full body look at's for those states as well. So if we wanted to extend that full body setup across to the stops, we'd have to take our stop animation in Maya and also for that entire animation, author right, left, uh, and sort of three quarters versions of those. So additive animations are another solution that kind of solves that problem. If you've ever used layers in Maya, you've already made additive animations. They're essentially a pose or an animation that layers on top of your already existing animation. So in this case, we're going to build just a couple look at poses, additive poses on a layer above our idle pose that we can sort of project onto that in the same way in Unreal. Now, the great thing about additive animations is because they're just a purely an additive pose that layers over another pose, they can be layered over anything. So in this case, we could use the same exact additive look at's to layer over our idle animation as well as our stop animations. So we kind of get them both for, you know, you kill two birds with one stone. Now the downside of additive animations is that you need to be pretty conservative with what you're actually moving on the character. You can't do lots of translation, rotation, all this, because any little additive pose change you made sort of cascades throughout the character. And I'll sort of talk about this a little bit more when we get into Maya and start animating. So let's hop right over there now, get into Maya and build some additive poses. All right, so here we are in my app, opened up the idle pose uh, that we made previously. Now, this isn't the one with all the breathe animation, and it's literally just the pose. Uh, and I just brought that in here because I want to keep it simple. I don't want to worry about having all that breathe and everything in here. Um, we'll kind of check it against that later. But just as far as, you know, keeping things simple to author, we're just going to work from the pose and build our additive poses on top of that idle pose that we made. Now, as far as the sort of layout I have here, um, I wanted to have a top down view. So this is just a uh, orthographic top view over here. So we can kind of see the angle that the character is looking at from a top down perspective, and then just the three quarters view so we can easily grab things and move them around. Okay, now we're gonna make a 90 degree left and a 90 degree right uh, turn for this character, look at for the character. And we're actually gonna build it in Maya on layers so that we're building it functionally in the same way that it's actually gonna be be played in Maya basically as a layer over our already existing pose. So let's build those two layers first over here. Let's add two new layers uh, here in our layer editor and we'll call them right 90 and we'll hit enter and then we'll call the next one left 90. Oh, I guess I can type 90. Okay. And we're going to add, we want to add the uh, spine, the three spine joints. So I'm going to select those. We want to add the arms and we want to add the head to both of these layers. I'm going to add those selected objects. And then just to get me started, while I have everything selected, I'm also going to add a key on everything on both these layers. So we make sure that all the animation we're doing in auto keying going forward uh, actually gets applied. Okay. And then for now, let's turn off the uh, right 91 so that we can work on just the left 91 as a starting point. Okay, so let's take a look at our top down view here and we're gonna start with the head and work our way down because where are the heads looking? That's the most important bit. We want that to be looking 90 degrees in our direction. So we're gonna be looking to his left. I'm gonna go over here to my ortho view and just grab the uh, sort of world space rotation and turn it until the head is looking pretty much 90 degrees. Okay, now of course that looks super goofy because we haven't adjusted the rest of the body yet, um, but that's gonna be next. So let's grab all of our spines now, and we're gonna do the exact same thing. Over here in our ortho view in uh, top down, we're gonna use this sort of world space rotation to rotate all of our spines until we get to a point where the uh, 
head is looking like it is could physically sort of look in that direction in the in the you know based off of where we had moved it before we're going to do the same thing with the arms i'm going to grab both the upper arms and rotate them around uh in that direction as well uh until we get something that looks uh, pretty natural and then we're going to kind of look over here at it and adjust our pose a little bit um to see if we can make it look just a little bit more natural uh, and a little bit more balanced out, we'll maybe bring the uh, arm, like just fix the arm poses just a little bit. Like I think maybe this uh, this arm here could kind of come down in front of the character just a little bit. We don't want to change the pose too much because it's being going to be additively applied. Doing any huge changes to this pose are gonna cause sort of cascading problems um, as it's layered on to uh, our, our you know, other poses that are maybe a little bit different from this. Um, let's add to a little bit of sort of uh, lean in this direction here, since he's turning so far that way. And lastly, let's take a look at the neck and we're gonna sort of rotate that and give it also a little bit of adjustment in the direction that he is looking, okay? I'm going to uh, also give us a little bit of, actually, let's do that here on these top two joints, just a little bit of torque on the body there to, to bring him kind of around to that direction, okay? Now, he's leaning out a little bit far over this, and I don't really want to move the lower body too much because the problem is, is if I move this cog at all in an additive animation, it's going to change all the bone relationships all the way down the leg. And as it blends between these animations, those additive changes to like the hip knee and foot are gonna cause sliding in the game, okay? So that's one of the downsides of additive animations is that you need to be pretty conservative um, with where you're uh, applying your animations. And generally you wanna kind of stick to the upper body as much as possible. Um, I'm just gonna kind of adjust it from this pose a little bit to try to make it feel a little bit more balanced. Um, I don't know how good of a job I'm gonna be able to do here with this, but we'll give it a shot and see. Okay, and now I'm just kind of tweaking it a little bit more just to see where we can land. Maybe tilt the head a little bit that way to make it look a little bit more natural. Okay, now this is our most extreme one, remember, so uh, we can kind of just get it as good as we can get it here. Now let's kind of compare it to our base pose. We can do that by looking at it here and turning off our layer and it'll bring us back to our base pose. We wanna make sure that it looks like a sort of natural um, continuation of that pose. And I do think I'm gonna to try to just bring the character a little bit more upright towards center here, just by adjusting these spines a little bit so that we get something that's a little bit more balanced. So let's take a look at it compared to our base pose. And that looks pretty good, okay? So we're gonna use that for our right pose uh, on just the upper body, or sorry, our left pose. I said the wrong thing. And then I'm gonna go through and craft the right pose using the same exact technique. All right, so with a little bit of noodling, I now have my two poses and I'm gonna kind of show them to you. I used the same exact tactic to create the right pose as I did to make the left. So there was no surprises there. Um, let's take a look at our left pose first. Um, now, it looks a little bit of wonky from this camera, but you got to remember that what you're actually going to see is when your character is rotating around to the left. So this is actually the pose that you're going to end up seeing in game or something similar to it, probably a little bit more pulled out bases off our camera. Now, I could maybe clean this up a little bit and get the arms uh, out in some uh, better positions to get a little bit of a better silhouette. But for now, I'm just going to leave it like it is. So similarly, if we turn on the right, once again, it looks kind of a little bit wonky from this camera. You don't have a great silhouette, but remember, this is what you're actually going to see in game. And that actually has a nice clean silhouette because you're going to see these look at animations as you're actually rotating around the character. So it's important to actually look at them in the context of how they're actually going to be seen in the game. So 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to export each of these animations. Now they're not truly an animation, they're just a pose. And how I'm going to export them is I'm going to export the right one, just maybe 10 frames or so here of it with the right layer turned on. And then I'm going to export the left one with just the left layer turned on. And what I'll get is 10 frames or so of each of those poses to work with and build an additive animation out of in Unreal. So I'm going to do the export process off screen, and then we'll hop over to Unreal and see what we can do with these. So we have these two assets now that we really like. They're what we want in Maya, and we want to export them out and get them into Unreal. For the export process, you're just going to export the same way we did every other time, as if these are a full body asset. And when you import them into UE4, it's the same process. There's no special uh, setup for when you import them in. They're just going to be imported as full body animations. All of the additive setup is going to happen in UE4 once we already have the assets in there. So let's hop into UE4 check out our assets and do some additive setup. All right, so here we are in UE4 now, and I have my poses imported in. You can see that I brought in the left-right pose and I added a suffix on there, add, to mark them as additive, so we can tell the difference between those and the previous poses that we made. I also added a third pose in here, that default idle pose, because we're going to need that as part of the additive setup process. Now, these animations import in as full body animations, just like any other animation. There's no thing you need to do different when actually importing them in initially. The setup is all in here in the animation asset once they're here. OK, now the first things first, we want to check these and actually make sure that they look like what they did in Maya, okay? That's the first thing. Whenever you import animations in, you want to just double check and make sure that it actually looks correct. And they do. They seem to look fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here into our asset details and find the section additive settings. And you'll see that by default, all animations are set to no additive because generally, you know, the expectation is when you bring an animation into Unreal, you're going to use the full that full animation. But what we want is to have it be treated just like it was as those layers in Maya. And if we think about it, here's what was happening on those layers. We had a base animation pose, that base idle pose, and we added information onto it on that layer. And what we want Unreal to pull out of these animations is that added information, the difference between that original idle pose and the new pose that we made. So we need to tell it, hey, I want you to look at this original pose and look at this new pose. And this animation just needs to be the difference between those two. And that is what these settings here are going to do for us. OK, so let's select either one of our 90 degree animations. And instead of no additive, let's say we want to make a local space animation or additive asset. OK, and as a base pose, this is probably going to be default to skeleton reference as a base pose we want to actually select our our pose that we were that we were animating uh, against on top of so let's go change this to animation frame and go out and actually find that idle pose and i actually had already had it here selected so uh, if you go down and select thor idle f pose uh, we're now saying that we want the local space difference in rotations and translations between frame zero of this animation. Okay, now if you had if you were actually had a whole animation here, you could pick the pick the exact frame you wanted to diff against, but our animation is just one pose, so that's all we got to do. So now we uh, need to set that up for this other one. So let's go over here and say local space, select animation, and I had sort of pre-done that already. OK, and then we need to put these now into a simple blend space, uh, you know, similar to how we had our other look at blend. OK, so let's pull over our content browser here and uh, right click on one of these and we will say create. Uh, oh, actually, I guess you can't create a um, blue or a blend space right from that menu. So instead, let's right click here and go to animation and let's do a blend space 1D, OK? And it's going to ask us, what skeleton do we want to create that on? we got to go find our Thor skeleton. Here we go, Thor skeletal mesh. And it's going to create a new blend space. So let's call this Thor nav idle look at blend. And then we'll make it underscore additive to mark it different than that previous one that we created, OK? And then we'll save that out. 
we'll open this guy up and we want our uh, ranges here to be negative 90 and 90. So let's let's kind of do some cleanup here on this horizontal axis. Let's say that the name uh, of it is look at angle and we want the minimum value to be negative 90 and our positive value to be 90, okay? And I believe that negative 90 is to the left. So let's put that guy on the left and let's put our look at additive on the right. And if we kind of scrub through it, we can see what our look at is hopefully gonna look at or look like at the end of the day here, okay? So that's it for the uh, actual animation setup. And now we're gonna hop over to the animation graph and actually implement these. We have our blend space all set up, ready to go, and our assets are all marked as additive assets. The last step here is to go over to our animation blueprint and actually set this up. Now we have a full body setup that we built from last time, so we'll kind of review what was there, and then we're gonna pull that out and replace it with our new additive approach. Now here we are in our animation blueprint, uh, and I'm here in the top level of the animation graph. If your screen doesn't look like this when you open it up, you're probably in some other part of the blueprint. Just navigate down here to the bottom left in the My Blueprint section and click on the animation graph, and it will bring you right to this top level of the animation graph. And right here you can see we have our locomotion state machine that we've been working on this whole time. So click and go into it. And as a refresher, let's take a look at our idle pose and what we currently have set up. So in our idle state currently, we have the setup from the last episode, which is our full body idle look at blend here being controlled by the look at angle and it has the full range of motion. We're actually gonna disconnect that by selecting or holding down alt and clicking this to disconnect it. And we're just gonna pull that down out of the way in case we wanna hook it up again later. Now, we're gonna reuse this old idle forward animation that we had, and we're gonna apply our new additive asset over top of it uh, and just sort of layer it onto it. And there's actually a special blend node for that. So if we pull off of this by clicking and dragging, we can search for additive. And you see here that there's a specific blend node called apply additive, which is exactly what we want. So this blend node is saying we want to apply an additive animation to this base pose, right? Which is exactly what we want to do. We want to apply our additive look at blend space over top of our normal default uh, animation idle pose. So if we pull off of this additive section, we can go hunt down our blend space by just searching add blend, and it should pull up right there at the top. And here's our additive blend space we made. And just like our previous one, we want to pipe look at angle by copy and pasting that into it. So now what this logic is saying is we want to play our nav idle F animation. And at all times while this is playing, we want to apply our additive look at blend space based on our current look at angle to that pose all whenever we're in the idle state. So let's compile, save this, save this and sort of moment of truth. Let's check it out in the game and see if it works. If we hit play, when we rotate back and forth, we should get the character looking at up to 90 degrees, exactly like we expect, right? Now, just like our previous version of look at though, uh, when we stop, we're not getting any kind of those look ats because we didn't really like author look ats yet for the stop animation. But as I said, this is one of the uh, benefits of doing an additive animation is we can actually apply this additive look at over our stop as well. So if we go back to our animation blueprint, down here, we can actually copy this logic. If we go back into our idle state, we can copy all of this apply additive information by just selecting it and hitting copy. I'm just hitting control C. Go into our stop state. Let's make some room here, disconnect this. And I'm gonna paste it into here. And let's plug this in just like our idle pose. Compile, save. Now we should have the same exact behavior during our stop animation as well. So if we start looking during our stop, the character will look to the left. Similarly, the character will start looking to the right. Okay. So you can kind of see the power of additive animations. If you have a bunch of uh, in and out states uh, between your idols um, and whatnot, where you want look at or some kind of aiming to be applied, additives are sometimes the right approach. Now, the downside of additive animations, as we noted, is that, you know, 
you don't really get as much control because you got to kind of like limit what bones and whatnot you use, but they're a pretty powerful tool for getting a nice simple look at or aim scheme if you have vertical up and down over your stops, starts, and idle poses. And that's it for this episode about look at animations using the additive approach. Now you might ask yourself, when would I use this additive approach versus the full body approach from the last episode? And there's not a clear cut answer to that. The, the two techniques have their pros and cons, and you sort of have to choose what's right for you. The full body approach will generally give you more control because you're authoring every one of those assets. You can use the full body, the legs, everything, the hips, you can adjust it all, right? Uh, the problem though is that it requires more assets overall, because as we noted, if you want to extend those look ats into your stop animations or the other things that sort of chain into your idle, you need to build those look at assets for all those animations as well. On the other hand, the additive approach is a nice way to get that whole sequence done really fast because you build one additive animation and you kind of layer it over all your different states. The problem is, is that as we sort of noted in this episode, it's a little bit more limited. You want to keep that animation pretty conservative because you don't want to junk up the, the, the rest of the character or create foot sliding or that stuff. So generally speaking, I would use a full body approach when trying to create a higher fidelity uh, product if I have the time. If I don't really have the time and I'm trying to rush through and just get the stuff in the game, I'll use an additive approach because it's just faster and uses less assets. Any approach that generally uses just killing it with assets will look better in the end, um, but is more time consuming. That's really what it comes down to. So as with many things in Unreal and game development in general, there's many ways you can do things and there's not a clear cut answer as to which one is right or wrong. It's more about what's right or wrong for the thing that you're working on. So hopefully in this episode, I kind of showed you the uh, power of additive animations. If you wanted to experiment with additive animations more, you could expand it out into your runs. Maybe you could add a little additive look at or something onto your runs that you could layer in there over your run loop. Um, or you could do the same thing for your idle animation by creating another like layered fidget uh, additive on top of the already existing animation. Those are great ways to add a little simple life to thing. And the cool thing is, is you can layer them over any other animation as well. So if you had a little look at animation, you could layer that over any other animations that you have in the future. The only thing to watch out for, the gotchas with uh, additive animations are try to keep them simple. Like, like I said, the more rotations on more bones you have in the body, the more cascading additive information you're getting over the rest of the character. And especially if you start layering a bunch of additives onto the same asset, you can run into a situation where you sort of lose your original pose or the original intent of the base underlying animation. So just be careful about layering up too many additives on top of poses that you you really like. And with that bit of advice, I think I'm going to sign off for today. So happy animating. Till next time. Catch you later.